While many people are complaining about the price of fuel, millions of people around the world are wondering how they are going to pay for their next meal. The price of rice has jumped over 50% worldwide, leading to political instability and riots in poor countries. Are we going to see world famine like we've never seen before, or is there a way to avoid the inevitable? We were all talking about this before the show. I'm going to go to you, Matt. Well, we have some serious, uh, now that we've had a little a green rush of legislation in the last couple of years, we, it's time to stop and reflect about what kind of damage that might actually be doing. You know, there's for every action, there's a reaction. According to the World Bank, uh, food prices are up 83% in the last three years. Um, Congress mandated a five-fold increase in the use of biofuels last year. Do you, and do you, anyone know how much uh, of the corn grown in the United States now goes into ethanol? It's 20%. 20%. And that has a consequence. And the consequence is rising food prices. For the last 100 years, the percentage of an American's income that they had to devote to feeding themselves was going down. I consider that a sign of progress. A hundred years that has now reversed itself, and we're going to see going forward if we don't do something about it, uh, we're going to see the, the percentage of uh, average American's income being devoted to food going up. It's silly. It's silly. And the idea that you're going to solve the world's fuel uh, 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 concerns by growing biofuels. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And of course, the cost of food is inextricably tied to the cost of oil as well for transportation right. and processing exactly. purposes. So the the rising cost of oil is also a major factor in the rising cost of food. Mm -hmm. I think in the United States we've been somewhat sheltered from that because we have such a rich agricultural tradition, and still we have a tremendous agricultural production in the U.S. And that's that's sheltered us and protected us from some of this, but it's going to be a very big issue in the years to come, especially in the third world countries. It's well, the it's poorest people on the planet who right. get hurt the hardest There's when these prices go There's a huge domino effect, right? If you don't have enough corn to sell, the price goes up, you can't feed your cattle or whatever. You, I mean, not just corn for eating, but for, for feeding livestock also, and it's just a huge domino effect. Well, and, and, the, and it's a sham because, uh, you know, the policymakers in Washington have said, oh, a short-term fix, we'll use ethanol, it's a bunch of bull, you actually have to buy, burn, and I do mean real bull because you're not going to have more cattle. Uh, <laughs> you have to burn more ethanol per unit volume to get the same amount of energy that you'd get out of a lesser volume of gasoline because ethanol just doesn't have the BTU rating that gasoline does. And so people are thinking, oh, you know, that's great. I don't have to buy as much gas. Uh, bingo. If they've replaced the gas with ethanol, you're going to have to buy more gas because you're not getting the, the fuel boost out of it. And until we go to fuel cell powered cars or something like that, liquid flammable fuels are going to be what Americans are forced to use to move from point A to point B for quite a while. And the food thing is going to get worse. I mean, there, there are now uh, riots all over the world yeah. because of the food problem, not only the f because of what's going on, but the World Bank has made some what I consider to be disastrous ideas in policy in terms of telling people, well, don't grow your own food, grow stuff for export so you can, you know, have hard currency come in. And so now people can't even feed themselves because they don't mm -hmm. have the infrastructure. I mean, they didn't deal with the realities of infrastructure. And so uh, there is a real crisis in the world for, for hunger, and it's going to topple a number of governments, both in, uh, f for sure, in Africa, uh, and you may find other places in Southeast Asia uh, ha having the same problem. You can't feed the people, they're going to get angry and they're not going to stand idly by while their family starves well, to death. Let's be very clear. It is morally reprehensible for anybody in the, co in the world to be going hungry while someone else is using food for fuel. Mm -hmm. That well, makes no sense. I, I agree completely. I think it's ridiculous, it's obscene, and, and it's not going to change the American habit uh, of being addicted to, to gasoline and petroleum-based fuels. I will point out one other thing, is that it takes four bushels of grain to make one-fifth of alcohol. 
Something else well to think spent. about. <laughs> <laughs> Something Look, else to think about. We can deal with, uh, the point to take away from this is that we can deal with our environmental concerns, both in this, within the country and internationally, without resorting to taking our food and using it as fuel. That's the thing. It's not about not trying to find gl you know, uh, greener ways to, to power our cars or even greener ways to uh, produce energy. W we need to do that, and we need to I advance the technology so that that stuff becomes more cost effective. But the idea that you would take food and turn it into fuel is insane. And, and our government supports that, I, I find it <laughs> reprehensible. They oh, require and, for and long, some though. people have claimed that if you had a, a farmer and he could make ethanol on his uh, farm, and you, you started him off with um, 10,000 gallons of diesel, and then that's to get him going, and then he can make his own biodiesel and that sort of thing. He's going to run out of fuel at some point because it's taking more fuel to, to, farm. Uh, to farm than yeah. it is uh, what he's getting out of it, and right. particularly when you consider the other thing. And look at the oil companies and the gas companies. Anytime they can, they move their stuff in a pipeline uh, because that's by far the cheapest way once right. the infrastructure is trucking it to, across the country. Oh, right? yeah, the, mm -hmm. uh, moving stuff by right. truck. I, uh, I think diesel the other day was 416. 419. At, wow. at uh, Fred Meyer. I mean, that is hard on working people, whether. Um, they're in construction or whether they mm -hmm. are moving goods and services in, in a, uh, a trucker. I, I'm just amazed uh, that they're being able to keep up with things and that the inflation isn't really taking off. Well, inflation is taking off, yeah, unfortunately. I'm, I'm sure it will. Unfortunately, Huge. with our economists yes. who say, well, it's not the core inflation rate, which excludes energy and food, and I don't know anybody that can exclude energy and food from their normal, I have to go shopping and today and I have to get gas. Well, the reason that got Ridiculous. pulled out a couple decades ago was because it was so um, Enormous. steady. No, but it was steady in its growth and, and, and manageable and small. And so economists began to say, well, look, if you really want to look at inflation, you got to pull those two things out because <laughs> <laughs> they don't really. Yeah. <coughs> and now they're the yeah. most significant contributors yeah. to inflation. Right. So you got to put them back in. Okay. But they aren't going to. Big